Welcome everyone. Uh, as you wait for others to join us, on our screen we have uh, the cover of the booklet. So the book is called I Am Hope, Coins by Refugees. So we'll just hold on for one or two minutes so that uh, we have participants joining. I can see, yes, they're increasing by the minute. So in just two minutes, perhaps we'll have a full house. Uh, welcome again, everyone from all parts of the world, wherever you're listening in from. Welcome to this book launch, and we're happy to have you. First of all, some housekeeping issues. The launch will take an estimated one hour, 15 minutes, and we'll be doing it in English. Kindly use the chat option on your devices to give your views, comments, or questions. And this will be sampled at the end of, the, at the end of it, if time allows. Kindly note that this launch is being recorded. We are all connecting from various parts of the world and you may expect varied connection issues. Please bear with us if people drop off or have bad connection. My name is Mary Obara. I'm the program manager for the Lutheran World Federation in Kenya and I will moderate the session. Welcome all and again, Kindly use the chat to introduce yourselves. Just write your name on the chat. With us today are our various team panelists whom I'll briefly introduce. We have our three refugee panelists representing Kadana. We have Saeed Abuka, Jacqueline Irankunda, and Mark Okello. Kadana stands for Kakuma, Dadab, and Nairobi. Kakuma and Dadab are the two refugee camps in Kenya hosting refugees from over 20 nationalities. And Nairobi is the capital city, which hosts urban refugees. Kadana aims to promote the, and protect human rights and social economic development of refugees and asylum seekers in Kenya, as well as promote peaceful coexistence with host communities. Said, one of our panelists will say more about Kadana later. With us is also the Assistant High Commissioner for Protection, Gillian Triggs, representing the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR. UNHCR is also our major partners, LWF, and uh, we've worked with them. Uh, we work with them currently in over 15 countries working with refugees. We also have Francoise Mianda from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. OHCHR in Geneva. She represents the East and Southern African region. And we have Martin Junge, the General Secretary of LWF. Now briefly about LWF Kenya. LWF Kenya has worked with refugees for over five decades now. Our approach has been that of not only responding to the refugee emergency needs, but also that of empowering them, giving them a voice and a platform at the local, national, regional, and global levels so that they can share their views and concerns. In our programming approaches, we use psychosocial support as a healing process, both at individual and group levels. The approach has an interfaith element as we can identify with each other in our common humanity and inspire one another with the spiritual resources within us. Let me now give a brief background on how these poems were created. It was during a spontaneous initiative suggested, during a spontaneous in initiative that it was suggested that uh, we get these poems done by refugees. We asked the refugees during some focus discussion groups that you are holding to create a poem defining who they are poetically and bring out unique contribution they make to their communities. We asked if you had to use a metaphor, an image starting with I am, what would it be? The idea was really one of self-celebration as each of us is unique in his own environment and ecosystem. Some took a short moment to write the poem, some just reflected. Then each of them was given a chance 
to express the poem in whatever language they are comfortable with. As we all know, daring to speak in the I am language, expressing your own, equali equal your own qualities is not an easy thing. But poetry allowed this to happen in a very genuine and unique way. It was a very joyous moment, as you can imagine. Something very unusual and uplifting as peers also cheered and applauded. We later realized that the poems were just too good. They were created spot on and were very beautiful and powerful. It was going to be unfair if we had not shared these widely with the world. And that's why we invite you to this occasion. Thanks to the initiative of our communications colleague in Kakuma, the poems were laid out in the beautiful publication that we are now launching today. As you read the poems, they strongly bring out a refugee's dignity and resilience, and they convey how they have contributed to, to make society what it is today. Throughout the booklet, the image of light is repeated constantly with a radiance and obvious strength. Each of the authors in their own way works in dark places of violence, injustice, or suffering. But again, each of them is an artisan of light, developing solidarity, promoting peaceful coexistence and respect for human rights. And this is in the context of an amazing patchwork and setting of cultures and languages. This is what we'd like to celebrate today and to offer the platform to hear their voices. Without much ado, I now invite Martin Junge to read a poem of his choice from the booklet and give us some opening remarks. Welcome, Martin. Thank you very much, Mary, and uh, good morning uh, to each of you. It's a great joy to be part of this uh, webinar. And let me uh, greet uh, in particular our three poets um, representing all the others uh, who have been contributing to this publication. Let me say that the day I received that publication, uh, I was joyful and I felt encouraged and I felt grateful. Um, I felt joy because I saw that this I am, um, which most of the poems is starting with, is already an expression of dignity, of affirmation, of, um, yeah, people uh, coming to terms with a, with a very difficult reality, but beginning to articulate, finding words to explain who they are in the midst of all of that. So I felt uh, grateful and encouraged um, because in addition, I saw that um, all these I am, which most of the poems will start with, was never uh, a self-contained I am. But all of the poems, they have a strong look to the neighbor, to the community and always asking the question, who I am in view of my neighbor. So you get beautiful sentence about being light, being hope, being counselor, being soldier, being guardian, all of these expressions coming out, uh, which I found encouraging. Because I believe looking at the global numbers uh, today and uh, realizing the magnitude of the numbers of people seeking protection, people also on the move, being displaced. I believe one of the key issues we are facing as a global community today is indifference. Uh, the numbers, they seem to be leaving us more and more indifferent. And I felt in the poems that I read there that indifference is not an option for those who wrote. They say, yes, here I am, peace, light, hope, guardian, counselor, for the sake of the other, so that everybody can find life in dignity. I have chosen a poem, which you will find in page 13 of the booklet. It's called, I am peace, I am hope. 
And uh, I found in that poem all of that, what I tried to say in few words, reflected and captured. So, greeting and paying respect to our poets on the ground, acknowledging the beautiful partnership with UNHCI in particular, but also with all the others with whom we are working together. Let me read as a conclusion from page 13, I am peace, I am hope. I am peace, hope for the hopeless. God can raise you anywhere. Being a refugee does not mean you are dead. If you have peace, you can have anything. You can work and start a new life. I am peace, but in my country there was so much violence. My husband and parents got killed. I am peace. Life is possible when you have peace. You can live anywhere else. I've lived 11 years here in Kenya, and my children are grown up. I've helped many widows to make a living. Even if now some have left the country and forgotten about me, I help young women when they get married. I'm a counselor. I help marriages so spouses come back together. I am peace. I am hope. Thank you, Mary. Wow. Thank you very much, Martin. That's quite a good poem there. Um, thank you for opening this session and now and enlightening remarks. And now we invite Francoise Mianda also to read a poem of choice and give some opening remarks too. Yes, uh, Santa Sana, Mary. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all, and thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm really delighted to be here, not only as an African senior human rights officer, um, but also as a writer, because as um, the refugees, I also write poems, and uh, poems really help me uh, to go through difficult moments in my life, uh, building confidence, finding comfort in the present moment, and also nurturing uh, joy. I always admire really the strength and the resilience of persons who have been forced to flee their homes uh, due to a variety of reasons. It might be climate change, conflict, and other challenges. And um, to mitigate uh, the negative impact of these uh, challenges, uh, we really need to strengthen community-based mechanisms or initiatives such as this one. <laughs> Uh, just to ensure that voices of women, uh, youth, children, IDPs and refugees and other vulnerable peoples um, are not left behind, that their voices are heard and uh, that, that they are given the opportunity to participate really in prevention of conflict, um, in mitigation and recovery processes. It was also good as a human rights, uh, senior human rights officer at the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. It was good to see um, the contributions of uh, many NGOs to the Universal Periodic Review of, uh, of Kenya, including Kadana. Uh, that was good because uh, it, this is really a tool for everybody to use to advocate um, for for the promotion and the protection of human rights, including the human rights of uh, refugees. I remember for that particular session, um, the issue of uh, refugees having difficulties accessing to employment uh, opportunities um, has been raised among others. So that's where, for example, now with the decision of the government of Kenya to close uh, the, the, the Dadaab and Kakuma, uh, refugee camps by uh, next year, we really need to, to use all the avenues to remind uh, the authorities that um, we need to develop sustainable strategy to find the most appropriate, the most uh, durable and right-based solutions uh, for refugees and asylum seekers living uh, in these camps. Maybe just to, yeah, to go, I, I read the book and uh, I was quite uh, excited reading other, writing the poem, but I would read um, I'm the Ego on page uh, 10, because I think uh, James Birindra is like me, is uh, a human rights advocate. 
I am the eagle. I am an eagle and I can see no matter the situation. I can go without security. I rescue people out of danger and take them to another level. We are trained to see our future. We are refugees, but found no space to express ourselves as human beings. We are advocating. I am the ego, not giving up. I speak up and raise up alone when people are in danger. That's so powerful, really uh, so powerful. And this right, because we have right by virtue of being human. And um, I like also the title of this um, booklet because hope for me is uh, one of the most important tools in life. Because no matter the situation, no matter the challenges, no matter the difficulties, you can be refugees, you can be whoever you are, but if you have hope, as you have faith in you, you have faith in God, you have faith in a better future, you will thrive and prosper as certainly as the day follows the night. So that's, I will stop there. Thank you very much. Asante San. Thank you very much, Francoise. Those are very encouraging words. Um, I'd now like to invite our three refugee panelists to read their poems. And uh, we shall start with uh, Saida Buka. Said is a Somali national and the chairperson of Kadana. He has lived in Kenya since the 90s and currently lives in Nairobi. Nairobi hosts over 50,000 urban refugees. Said is a paralegal and is involved in various initiatives, including being a community health volunteer. Said will first tell us about Kadana in brief and then proceed to read a poem that he wrote. Welcome, Said. You have to unmute your microphone, Said, and repeat again. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Kedana. Kedana, it started as a dream by refugees. We wanted our voices to be heard all over the world. And we wanted the world to know that we are part of the solution rather just to receive you know assistance we wanted to be contribute to the decision making of our affairs which we are doing now through kadana that's kadana uh, if i go more than that uh, we, we had created uh, a 2018 and until now we have done a lot of you know initiatives now maybe we can elaborate more about kadana later on can i go to the poem now and recite it yes please say it go ahead thank you i am the unknown soldier I'm the child who has a message. I wonder, I cry. Do you know why? Every bomb has my name on it, but without my consent. A civil war broke. Do you know why? Because we needed democracy and justice. But what happened was that civilians were killed, our girls were raped, our, our buildings, were destroyed. Then we crossed the border and came to Kenya. I believe the Kenyan people are the best in the world because they have beautiful souls. We are all brothers and sisters, yet as refugees, we are aliens for the system. Therefore, I'm the child, I'm the unknown soldier who still tries to pass a message, but my message is yet to reach the wall. Thank you, Said. That is very Thank you. touching. Thank you. you are the child, you are the soldier. 
Uh, next, we'll have a poem from Jacqueline Irankunda. Jacqueline is a Burundian national and has lived in Kakuma. Kakuma is a camp in the northwest of Kenya, hosting over 250,000 refugees from over 20 different nationalities. A majority of these refugees have lived all their lives in the camp. Jacqueline has been in the camp for the past nine years. She is also the treasurer of Kadana and represents Kadana Kakuma chapter. Jacqueline is in charge of women empowerment and was also a zonal leader in Kakuma for five years until 2018. She will now read her poem that she wrote. Welcome, Jacqueline. Karibu. Okay, sorry about that. Maybe we lost her a bit. So I'll just read the poem that she had picked. The poem goes, I am the lamp. I am the lamp in the community for the women. I resolve issues related to water. People look for me. I am a peacemaker and I'm a problem solver. Uh, if she returns, we'll ask her just a few more questions to let her tell us what inspired her when she wrote the poem. Uh, in the meantime, we can go ahead to invite Mark Okello. Mark is a Ugandan national and has lived in Kenya for over 30 years. He is the Kadana chair in the DAB. The DAB is a refugee camp in the northeastern part of Kenya that hosts over 200,000 refugees, mainly from Somalia. He is a member of the Connected Learning in Crisis Consortium and has also represented tertiary refugee students in Germany, from where he formed the Tertiary Refugee Student Network, a global network as it stands right now. Mark will read a poem of choice from the book, I Am Hope. Welcome, Mark. Okay, thank you, members. I'll read the first poem. I'm the morning sun. I wonder, what are my abilities? Who am I? What is the society expecting of me? I'm an advocate. My role is to enlighten the part of the world. Each morning for a period of 12 hours. To avoid being unfair, I eliminate another part of the world that was once in darkness. I can change my environment have the ability to turn black into light. What the world expects from me is light. I am the morning sun. I wonder, what are my abilities? Who am I? What is society expecting of me? I enlightened all those who have just crossed the night. Without injustice, I enlightened everyone. Thank you, this is the point. Thank you very much, Mark. Wondering who you are, such a dilemma. Um, as, we've, as we've had the, the poems being read out, uh, if anything inspires you, you can uh, continuously just put it in the chat. Feel free to just uh, comment uh, in the chat as we go ahead. Now, in the next session, we are going to engage our panelists, our three panelists, much more, uh, and we'll just discuss a few questions. Um, Said, what inspired you to create this poem that you've just read to us? What inspired me is that uh, my journey. I went through a lot, pain and relief, bitterness and sweetness. Sadness and happiness. It results that I'm alive and there is a hope. And that hope, it needs effort. I, I live in Kenya. I am one of thousands of refugees who have all of them a message. To come up with the message of, of hope. That's what inspired me to create this poem. Thank you, Said. Quite a powerful message there. You are a refugee, but you're an alien to the system. Uh, indeed, 
you're an alien in many ways. We could give a thousand and one examples, uh, movement restrictions, access to services. Um, thank you very much for bringing that out. Mark, the poem you read must have inspired you because you chose it. What could have inspired you to read that poem? Okay, the, the thing that really has been, uh, gave me an inspiration to this poem is that it brings the issue of a identity dilemma where the person knows himself, I know myself, you know yourself, everybody knows who she or is. But then the situation comes that with uh, the change of situation, environment, circumstances, in whatever form, you come to a start where you wonder who you are and what exactly does the society expects of you. So in this case, we see that uh, all of us are impacted in such a situation that we really do not know what we are at every circumstance that we are faced with day by day. We are in a real dilemma of such a situation. And for the refugees, this is even worse because we are in a real quagmire, a state that uh, really needs a lot of uh, understanding by everybody, including ourselves. That is why I chose this, this point, very touching. Yes, Mark, that is very touching. Um, you absolutely are in a dilemma as a refugee. Uh, you've expressed that in the poem. Said, uh, whom would you have liked this poem to speak to as you read it out? I'm addressing the whole world. In particular, those rulers who lead their countries to wage wars or a civil war, which produces IDBs and refugees to stop. I'm addressing also the host people that to tell them, we are with you. We are ready to go step by step with you. We are addressing also, I'm addressing the decision makers so that they allow the refugees, their voices, to be part of the solution. That's three groups I'm addressing. Thank you so much, Said. You're addressing quite a varied audience. Uh, for refugees to be part of the solution, for the world leaders to find a way, and for our political leaders not to lead us into war. Thank you very much. I'll pose the same question to Mark. Mark, uh, whom do you want to speak to through this poem? Okay. Uh, for, as for today, I'm very proud to be a part of this uh, panel and I address the audience, those who are listening to me now, I'm very sure they are from different organizations. So this uh, poem is, is also for you because uh, ref refugee being a refugee and uh, supporting refugees gives you a real dilemma of every situation that you are faced with. We have climate refugees, refugees coming from wars and everything. So uh, we are very sure that you are really stuck in the way in which you should help us to support us. So what does the society expect of you? That is the question. However, for the issue of this poem, this goes di directly to the refugees, refugees themselves, that they should also embrace this one because they are also in a situation that is very dire and uh, therefore every situation that they have is unique and needs them to identify their roles. And uh, as well, we have leaders in every uh, uh, part of the world who should also understand and ensure that uh, they rethink who refugees are and try to give them the cordial responsibility or rights that they do deserve. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. That is powerful. Uh, speaking to Jacqueline earlier on, she was of the view that um, being unable to travel outside the refugee camp for her, she really hoped to reach the rest of the world through this poem. So um, she'll tell us more if she manages to come back, but for her, it is reaching out the rest of the world through the messages in the poem. Um, Mark again, uh, what would you like the world to know about being a refugee? Okay, thank you so much. I would like, uh, first of all, to thank uh, everybody for helping us. And uh, this one is very, very touchy because helping somebody that you do not know is uh, something very touchy. And on the other hand, I would like uh, the world to know that refugeeness is uh, something that uh, is created. It is not uh, permanent. It is temporary. And therefore, we, we are also a part of the society and we also like... Uh, to tell uh, the, the rest of the refugees that uh, whatever they are, they should keep on participating in their societies so that uh, they maintain what they used to do at home. On the other side, the, part, the rest of the world should realize that uh, much as they are not refugees, but they are seeing and receiving refugees elsewhere, they should use their that one as a possibility of uh, treating refugees with cordial respect because one day, as, as a teacher, I do see, I, we are, I've studied about uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, what they call implicit curriculum. How you treat a person is the way that person will live, it, live with. If you treat them well, one day they go back home, they, they will learn that the same kind of treatment is the way they should do and give uh, the rest of the people in the community. So with uh, love, affection, and everything that they will learn from those different countries, they will really be powerful people when they go back to their countries of ori origin. So people from uh, refugees from Australia, Bangladesh, Jordan, Colombia, Brazil, Africa, Europe, and so on, they should realize that uh, they have a great role to play at this period of time when there are so many refugees and we have fatigue in uh, donor funding and other things. So it is their responsibility to be respected through their own uh, work. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, for that powerful message, message of participation, message of engagement from the refugees. Uh, it's quite relevant and timely to our context right now in Kenya. Uh, participation in decisions that affect refugees, for example, uh, that's quite powerful. Over to you, Said again. What would you like the world to know about being a refugee? Being a refugee is not as others will take. Being a refugee is someone who has chosen peace over the war. Someone who has chosen to forgive rather than revenge. To build rather than destroy. And it is as my brother Mark said clearly, and it should be a situation whereby it's going to end because it is something was created and it should be a temporary situation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are still hoping that uh, Jacqueline will join us, but if she doesn't join us, we'll share with you a video at the end of this session. Uh, what does this book mean to you, the title of this book, I Am Hope? Uh, maybe you can explain hope in your own words, Said, before you leave us. What does the title mean to you, uh, especially the word hope? Hope for me is my effort on people 
which inspired them to do good things, a positive change. That's hope for me. Okay. Mark, what does hope mean to you in your own words? In my own word, in our situation as refugees where we are very vulnerable and we rely on assistance, uh, hope here as has been portrayed in this, uh, this, this wonderful book. Uh, we see hope and uh, by seeing this hope, we can see that uh, we are able to do quite a lot of wonderful things for ourselves. We do not uh, withdraw and uh, become uh, pessimistic, but we are very optimistic in all the activities that we do. And we collectively see that uh, as individuals, we are really inspiring our fellow refugees because we are able to be light for them. We are able to shine for them. We are all able to protect and defend them. So by doing this, our individual participation is also a collective participation where everybody sees that there is light at the end of the tunnel, which is very good and really very helpful. And I'm very hopeful that with uh, this uh, point, the world, all the people who are participating in uh, as the audience today will go back also with the idea that uh, there is a need to change the refugee paradigm where we see them differently and we should change it so that we create a refugeeness as a school where those refugees will learn to go back with a great change for the best one day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Said will answer this last question and then continue to tell us more about Kadana. Uh, Said, if you are to tell one thing to all the displaced persons of the world, what would it be? Continue to be resilient. Mm -hmm. And please, respect the host people and their culture. Contribute. We all are suffering in a way, all people, but still we can contribute where we are. That's my message. Wow, thank you so much, Matt. That is very deep. Uh, sorry, Said. Uh, maybe you can just briefly again, um, for the sake of those of us who didn't quite understand Kadana, maybe just a bit more on uh, how you've engaged, what you've done so far. Kadana, uh, we have done a lot, um, but now we can say, or I can say only three. We took uh, part in the public participation session with the National Assembly in Kenya, and that's historic and a milestone. It is a daring, and we addressed the security committee on the refugee bill 2019, where we pointed out some clauses so that they can uh, rectify. And this couldn't come true without the assistance of LWF, without the UPR process, which is which a process calls for dialog, amicable solution, not confrontation, not complaining. Yeah. And also we took uh, some families during COVID-19. We distributed food and non-food items. Also, we came with initiative called uh, Lending Hands. We wrote a letter to Safaricom so that they can give access to the refugee to use their ID or their uh, whatever they want to access 
uh, Mbesa and other services. Yeah. And Thank in a nutshell, so yeah. In a nutshell, I want to um, say thank you for all organizations who are supporting refugees. They are lot local and international, and without them, we didn't reach where we are right now. That's uh, we have to say, and uh, now and then. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Said. Um, just sampling a comment from the chat. Thank you so much. It would be nice to hear how you got the refugees to read these poems, what the former workshops looked like, and so on. Okay, thank you so much, viewer. Um, earlier on, we had mentioned uh, just a, in brief how the booklet came to be. Uh, one of our colleagues came down to Kakuma to just have focus group discussions with uh, refugees, the usual discussions on um, how to engage with them, how they can work better with them. And then um, the, the discussions became very engaging and um, uh, instead of going the traditional way of getting or extracting, we need this, we need this, we are suffering here. We felt that uh, during the psychosocial support uh, focus group discussion, we wanted to empower and really make the refugees that were involved in the, the discussions to believe in themselves. And so we requested them to personify themselves into uh, an I am kind of uh, poem, and we gave them time to meditate and, uh, and uh, reflect and write very short poems about what they think they are and their contributions to society. And so that's how they came to write the poems. The poems were short, long, and in various languages. So we looked at them, and uh, many of them were very inspiring. So we decided to engage the technical services of our internal communications uh, department and our colleague put them very beautifully, made them into poems, and uh, that's how the poems came to be. Thank you very much for your insights there, viewer. Um, because Jacqueline has not been able to join us, I'll ask our colleague um, to share with us a four minute video that we took of Jacqueline when she was talking to us. Welcome, Sanam. Sorry, the connectivity in Kakuma is really a challenge. I will show two short videos that we're taking on two different rehearsals because we really want um, Jacqueline's voice to come across and not to be forgotten because the power probably came down and this is the reality that they live in Kakuma. So let me share my screen and turn these two short videos on so that she can be with us. Mimi Chakwanza, mi kutetea haki ya wa mama. Iyo, kama wamama wanakuwa na shida nyingi ambazo hawawezi hawawezi kutatua especially kama mama ameoreka ako, na, ako kwa mji unakuta na tatizo ambaro haerewani na muki na mewake sasa hako ina, in, inabidi ni ingirea kati ni waerewanishe wakate kuenderea na maisha ok you say that you do cancel couples when they have a problem, domestic problems, and uh, from there, when they go back, they said that uh, they are feel they are now solving their issues together. So she's doing counseling, she's bringing them together to talk between themselves so that they can solve their issues. So the big thing she's doing that she's bringing them together. She's finding a forum where they can talk so that they understand one another. They saw the insight yeah, of uh, their problems. She's also saying that there is a problem of water within the camp, and this one will cause conflict. And what she does, she connects, she cooperates 
with the agency's concerns and present advocate on the impact of the community not having water so that they share. These people can come to the community and uh, they hear what the community talks about water. If it is a matter of correction, then they do that. And uh, the problem of water now is limited. The issue of fight is no longer now. <laughs> It's also saying that uh, it's also government comes and starts saying that okay, refugees should go back to their country. Women were stressed, so she calls them, counsel them, give them the appropriate uh, information, tell them this is a government issue, it is beyond refugee. With us, we know very well that we are here because of war. And no one will force you to go back where you ran to. And if it is a matter of taking back us back, they know that they will take them to a safe place. So she is giving them hope. Mbiye ni wajisikie kama wakimbizi wengine, kama watu wengine. Na nikiambia mashirika bazi ya naotoa msada ya siko ya sikome kutoa msada ya endelea kutoa msada ili wakimbizi wapate ile msada yenye walikuwa napenda na mkimbizi sehemu yoyote ile aliko aheshimiwe kama kama mtu wengine na afanye anachokitaka kukifanya kama wengine asi kusipokuwa na kuzuiriwa ama kubuguzwa ama kutengwa na atisikia ya kuwa yuko huru kwa sehemu yoyote ile aliyoko na kufanya anarotaka kama watu wengine thank you so much for sharing those videos those are sentiments from Jacqueline unfortunately she's not been able to join us until now Jacqueline in that video says uh, she's talking to refugees and telling them to feel like any other human being uh, not to feel isolated not to feel like a lesser human being uh, to feel at home wherever they are to respect the host communities to respect themselves and uh, live with dignity and at the same time she's uh, talking to the to any displaced persons that they have rights and that they are entitled to those rights and uh, talking also to the um, the world of um, community the community of humanitarians that uh, reaches out to refugees to continue the good work and um, she really appreciates that um, someone somewhere knows the plight of refugees and is reaching out to them i think in a nutshell that's what uh, she was trying to communicate okay um then this session with our panelists and uh, thank you so much said uh mark and jacqueline on video for sharing your poems and uh, insights to our viewers uh thank you so much for the streaming in of uh chats that i'm seeing uh you can continue putting in your inspirations and your views on the chat uh i now want to invite jillian triggs from your next year who will also read a poem of her choice share her perspectives and officially launch the book and um, cut the ribbon probably a virtual ribbon welcome dear. well thank you very much uh, uh, mary and uh, can i say what a very great honor it has been uh, to me to be invited to to launch uh, albeit with a with a virtual ribbon but nonetheless to launch i am hope uh, these poems are enormously important for the reason that many of you have identified they give a voice to courageous refugees who can teach uh, each of us the power of hope and personal dignity that no one can take away um i think the 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 message of using a poem to reach out to that wider world is a very important one and i'm particularly struck by the point that's been made earlier uh, today uh, and that is of somebody who 
is in a refugee camp in, in Kenya or in anywhere anywhere else in the world, sometimes worse than camps, but immigration detention facilities uh, where they cannot leave. And the poem is a way of expressing uh, their, their, uh, their resilience, their dignity and their hope. Um, and perhaps uh, if you'll excuse a personal story, I remember some years ago, uh, I was um, in, in a former role uh, visiting Christmas Island, which is a four hour flight uh, into the Indian Ocean from Australia. And uh, a, a young girl, 17 years old, uh, was uh, on the island. She'd been there for a year. And I met her. She was very different from the others because she had very bright clothes. She was tall, very dignified. Uh, she spoke very little English. Uh, but uh, when I asked her what, she, what her aspirations were, she said she wanted to be a poet in the English language. And I remember thinking at the time, I'm not sure if, there, if that is at all realistic, whether she will ever be able to do this. And of course I was wrong. Two years later, she rang me in my office and asked me to launch her poems uh, in Sydney. Uh, and she is now uh, a, a perfect English speaker, uh, very powerful in using her voice to explain her plight. Uh, but also to give her dignity and her culture uh, to people who were really not aware of her situation. So I'd like to begin, if I may, by thanking all the poets uh, for your um, creativity uh, and for giving us a little bit of yourselves uh, to explain your feelings and to provide what is, I think, what comes across to me very powerfully uh, is your dignity and your integrity. And I think that we all can learn from that. Um, can I also, of course, thank the, the Lutheran World Federation and the World Service that they operate for their humanitarian and development work. Uh, they are an important partner, partner for UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, and we greatly value that partnership. Um, the point has been made, and I think it's a very uh, a critical one, uh, by, uh, by Martin Jung, that today we're dealing with an environment that is unprecedented and that we cannot be, uh, we cannot ignore and we cannot be passive about. Uh, the United Nations Refugee Agency and our, our High Commissioner for Refugees, Philippa Grandi, uh, launched a report a week ago connected to World Refugee Day that this event is also connected to, but announcing 82.4 million people seeking asylum or displaced or refugees or stateless in the world. Um, and these figures, every year they go up. We half thought that they would go down in a year of COVID, but in fact, the numbers have increased by yet another 4%, the numbers doubling in the last 10 years. Um, this, is a, this is a serious global problem for each of us to take responsibility for uh, and to speak up. And I can think of no finer way to speak up than through, through poems. So there are a few um, themes that I'd like to explore just very briefly, but one which is uh, pervasive uh, is a point that we understand well at the UN Refugee Agency, and that is the importance of peace. Many of the poems make uh, the point that peace is all they ask for in order to live. Uh, if you have peace, you can have anything. You can work and start a new life. Another poem says, life is possible when you have peace. You can live anywhere. And of course, the words, I am peace, I am hope. We know uh, in our missions uh, very, very recently that again and again, uh, asylum seekers, refugees, people displaced in their own country ask for really one thing, peace and an end to conflict so that they can rebuild their lives. Um, I've recently been on mission in Mozambique, where we have at least 850,000 people displaced from uh, insurgency and violence of the most extreme kind. And the refugees are, uh, or the displaced within their own country, are in great need of food, uh, of clothing, of shelter, of education for their children and for livelihoods. But the one thing they ask for more than anything else is peace so they can return to their villages and return and rebuild their lives. So I think the, the, the idea of peace is crucial. And we see this in many parts of the world for the Syrians 
um, uh, who've lived uh, with the generosity uh, of, of Jordan for more than 10 years, to uh, the Rohingya from Myanmar who have been living now for four years in Bangladesh. And I'm sure you know of many others, most particularly, of course, uh, at, in Kenya, at Kakuna and uh, Dadab and Nairobi, uh, which is the inspiration for these poems. I've also appreciated uh, the, the recognition that UNHCR as a refugee agency and the Lutheran World Federation World Service takes a rights-based approach. Um, I am a lawyer. I do believe in the rule of law. Um, and I, I believe uh, that if we see these, the plight of asylum seekers, refugees, displaced people in terms of their rights and their dignities, then that elevates their position. They are not aliens. The law is clear. They are not aliens. They have legal rights. Um, and, uh, and one of the poems uh, speaks of being a refugee is not the end of life when you know your rights. And I think understanding the law and the, the importance of the rule of law means that you can rise in dignity. I think it's been very uh, Im impressive to hear people speak about the gifts that they can bring to their communities, um, that they are part, refugees and asylum seekers, displaced people are part of solutions. They're not just um, passive recipients of aid, but they are active contributors to the communities on which we live. So while, of course, at the UN Refugee Agency, we must speak about the hardships and trials of those seeking protection from violence and persecution, from climate change, environmental degradation, inequality of women, uh, particularly women and girls, uh, and of course violence that, that derives from these root causes. We do have to speak about these conditions, but, but also uh, we need to emphasize the gifts that can be brought, and these poems are of course a gift. Well, um, uh, the poems that, that, that I would like to read, if I may, uh, very briefly, um, are uh, one that um, I think emphasizes the power of leadership. And uh, When I first saw the emphasis on I am, I thought, well, that's not really what we want to emphasize. It's not, it's not the individual we want to emphasize, but it's, it's, it's our community. Uh, and I think Martin Jung uh, explained this beautifully. Um, the I am is not only about our individual strength, but what we bring to our community. And these poems reflect that. And that's why I'm reading uh, two poems um, that, that, uh, that spoke to me. Um, and one is uh, by Shahara Caliph. Um, and I know these are all in English. Um, I wonder if they sound even more beautiful in, in, in Swahili or the language um, of, their, of, their, of, the, of the author. Uh, but I do uh, greatly value uh, Sahara's writing. And it's called, I'm a woman of the world. I am a woman of the world. I am the inspiration bringing women together in decision making. I'm a world changer. And the other um, by uh, Remy Lutwama called I am self-made and the poem is I am a dad and a mum I listen raise and look out to my community I provide accommodation and food to the most needy and vulnerable I guide counsel and protect I do not condemn I encourage and give hope to my community I'm a self-reliant king I train and equip my community with guidelines to self-reliance because it is the way to go given the little funding. No one can destroy me because I am self-made. And I think that message of self-confidence, but also of giving and relating to your community is a very powerful message. Can I also, also refer to the, to the message that so many have, have produced in these poems, the idea of light. The idea of light is so important to many religions and cultures. Uh, one poem says, I am the light of the world. Another says, I am the lamp in the community for women. I'm a peacemaker and a problem solver. Another says, I am heaven. I tell people to love each other. Or I am a candle. And one that I especially love, I am the moon. I believe in myself. And I think if we believe in ourselves, 
then we can reach out from that strength to the communities that we serve and to make that message clear to the global community so that we can take seriously, as Martin has urged us to do, to take seriously the plight of so many millions of people uh, and, and to think about the root causes and how we can address those uh, as, as our challenge for the future. So um, thank you to the Lutheran World Federation World Service. Thank you, Mary, for your, uh, for your guidance through this. Thank you most of all to the poets uh, who've been so courageous in, in telling us about their inner thoughts, but giving us strength because of their dignity and their courage. And so can I then, um, uh, at least virtually, cut this wonderful ribbon uh, to launch the book, I Am Hope, and I hope that it will be uh, bring the voice of refugees to, to the world at large. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mary. Thank you so much, Gillian. Those are very wonderful words. And uh, so now the launch is, uh, we are coming to the very end of it. But before that, I'd just like to sample a few um, sentiments in the chat. Uh, I was skeptical at first. In fact, this is the first time I'm part of sharing uh, of poem narratives. What a wonderful and powerful tool. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you too for joining us. Uh, one of our viewers says, um, she is powerful. I think this is uh, referring to Jacqueline. Kudos to her. She is a great asset. Um, that's okay. That, uh, I think that's enough sampling. Uh, before we wind up, I'd like to invite uh, Said to just uh, talk to refugees who are watching us and he knows where they are from. Said? Yes. I uh, would like to tell everybody, every refugee, every immigrant, wherever you are, feel that you are not alone. The spirit should be, we belong to the world. Yes. And also, we say, there is a saying, saying going like this. Those who are not thanking people or appreciating people are not thanking God. I'm hereby honored to thank the uh, government of Kenya by hosting us all these three decades. And also the county of Nairobi, which hosting us right now, they have offered, uh, offered for 40 refugees who are going under the UPR training. Also, our appreciation goes to UNCR, which I believe is the best thing happened to humanity over, uh, over the 21st century. Especially, my thank goes to Gillian Triggs, Thank you, madam, for your encouragement. Thank you. And also those CSOs who are supporting us in this mechanism of uh, UPR, those CSOs who are participating with us today in Garissa, all of you Kenyan people, we love you. Thank you so much, Said. We are now at the very end of our event. Thank you all who have shared their comments in the chat. They are very beautiful. It's a sign of friendship and solidarity. I now want to thank all our panelists here, Julian, Francois, Martin, and our three refugees, who took a lot of time to prepare for this in spite of uh, the connectivity issues we have uh, in Kenya. And as Elder Blair, we are very proud to share these poems with you today. And we hope you'll read them at your own time and be inspired by their voices, the voices of hope, dignity. I hope these poems will bring meaning for you and sustain our common efforts to improve the situation of, of refugees worldwide. On the screen, I think you can see the cover of the booklet again. 
Uh, you can easily download the booklet on our website. We have also shared the link to the booklet in the chat, and it's available both in English and French. And I think with these few remarks, uh, we will end the session and uh, people can leave at their pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good continuation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all the panelists, including Mary Opara. Thank you. Thank you, Said. Thank you, Mary. Well done. Thank you, Martin.